Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to the first episode of another Zero to Hero. In this series, we are going to be a hideout warrior. So for those who don't know what that is, essentially it is uh, people who make currency without playing the game conventionally, uh, people who make currency by trading, crafting, flipping, things like that. Things that require you to be basically be in your hideout. Right, or the majority of the time we're going to be in the, our hideout. Now there are exceptions, for example, if you were to beastcraft an item, you'll have to go to the bestiary. Or if you have to complete a prophecy for a faded unique, you'll have to go and complete the prophecy. But the majority is made without, uh, majority of the money is made without interacting with killing monsters of any kind. Um, so essentially that's what we're doing. Now for those who don't know, this used to be the entirety of my content a few years ago. I used to basically just do that. I was somebody who would sit in this hideout and just, you know, make currency without actually playing the game. Something that I've strafed away more and more as I grew as a content creator as well as a player, uh, because unfortunately it's very easy to kill a market uh, with uh, basically people watching you because they'll do the exact same thing you do and then it doesn't take very many people to do the exact same thing for a market to dry up really, really quickly. Uh, and then, or, or for a bubble, market bubble to pop, and then after that, well, you have to move on to the next thing. So it's always a big challenge for me to do these, especially on stream and with daily updates, because it means I constantly have to find something new. Now, you might be wondering, well, if, if whatever you're telling me to do right now in this video is no longer good, uh, as you just mentioned, then why am I watching, what's the point of me watching this video? Simple enough, you can take the I guess you could say uh, lessons, right? And the uh, idea behind certain things that I'm doing and you can apply them to different items uh, and then you'll be able to make currency because as long as you don't do exactly what I'm doing uh, and you put a little bit of thought into it, you will be able to get the exact same results or even better results uh, without having to deal with the competition that I have to as somebody who is streaming the entirety of the process. Okay, enough of that. Uh, disclaimer, now let's talk about how much money we've made so far, and then of course, how we went about it. So looking at our excellence here, you can see that we have made a total of 20.2 exalt. So this is again from absolute scratch, and this is not actually telling the whole story. There's a little bit more to it than that, because this does not account for bulk sales, which is a lot of the money, as you'll see uh, in, the, in the breakdown. And of course, this does not account for good rolls on specific uniques, for example. So in reality, we've probably made more so around 24 to 25 exalt in seven hours. So far, we've done seven hours of gameplay for this series, starting again from absolutely nothing. So the beginning is always going to be pretty rough. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you have no currency and when you have no money, it's hard to make money, right? Once you have a lot of currency, it becomes easier and easier to make money, especially with liquid currency, right? If I have 20X, but I only have, let's say two or three X available to, to, to work with, as I do like right now, for example, it's going to be a lot harder for me to make currency than if I had just a pure 20x all sitting there that I could use up. Uh, just something I figured I'd let you guys know. The more currency you have, the easier it's going to be to apply these lessons uh, and these methods. But let's talk about how we went about making those 20 exalts, right? Because for a lot of people, 20 exalt in seven hours is very difficult, especially without even considering that we started with absolutely nothing, just period. It's a difficult thing to achieve. So here's a breakdown of everything we did. So what I have here is basically what I did, how long I did it, and how much currency that I have at the end of it. So what I started with, because I had absolutely no currency, was Blood Aqueducts. Now the idea in Blood Aqueducts was to farm for a few T1 maps. I knew I wasn't really going to drop anything in Blood Aqueducts. There was no way I was going to farm a tabular or anything like that. Uh, so I just went for farming a few T1 maps that I could hit up with some, uh, some transmutes and run those. So I did that for the first 15 minutes or so, and I made zero money, right? After I left Blood Aqueducts, all I had was a few T1 maps. Next, for those T1 maps, I basically just farmed them up, uh, and I was basically going for whatever whatever drops that would be worth about 10 C total in value so I could move on to the Tabula Prophecy. And I did that for about 15 minutes of T1 maps or whatever, and by the end, I had about 10 C, and the vast majority of that 10 C was alterations. It's very easy to farm alterations, and they're 5 to 1, uh, so you could easily go up to a um, somebody who has a buy order for alterations, sell like 50 of them for 10C, and that's pretty much what I did, except I sold 30 for like 6C or something, and then I had a chaos drop and a couple alks, whatever. Uh, but it ended up being about 
uh, about uh, 10 C or so uh, that I had to start off. Okay, so once I had this 10 C, I bought the Tabula Prophecy. So as you can see here, the Tabula Prophecy is called the Cleanser of Sins. And what this allows you to do is to go in Act 3 in the, um, in the Scepter of God or in Act 8, I believe, in the K as well or whatever. And uh, I can't remember exactly where it is. And you can basically use this prophecy to drop a tabula. So this prophecy goes, you know, there's a pretty, pretty, there's a very limited supply. As you can see, only a few of them available. Uh, but there's always people who are posting them for very cheap because they're too lazy to do them or because they don't know what, the, what it even does. So what I did is I bought this. I bought two of them for 4C each with a 10C that I had. And then I did it. I vendored the tabula, which sells for a divine orb, and I sold the divine for 8C each, right? Uh, for a total of 16C with an investment of 8C. So I ended up with about 20C uh, after doing that uh, a couple times. And I did this a total of five times. It's not like I kept doing this over and over because as I said, the supply is very limited and it doesn't take long for it to start being sold at around 10C. And at that point, you're basically losing money. I personally didn't want to pay any more than 4C, even 5C. It's pretty bad when you're selling the divines for 8C. So not great profit there. But I did that until I had about 20C, which is all I needed to go into the lost maps. So as you can see, the divines sell for about 8C each pretty easily. Uh, next, we have the lost maps. So I bought these prophecies for 2C each. And for those who don't know what the lost map is, is you need to go to the Chamber of Sins and it's just going to drop you a pile of maps. Now, these maps do not respect your atlas and they are always tier one. So it just gives you a bunch of tier one maps. Now, of course, you could Horizon Orb the bad ones, which is something that I did. Uh, but in reality, the only bad one is Dungeon. All the other one, be it Stagnation, Estuary, and Haunted Mansion, are pretty okay. So I bought 20C worth of these prophecies, and I just got going and resetting the, uh, the Chamber of Sins until I basically had used up all my currency. And at that point, I had a lot of maps. So I put them up for sale. And as you can see here, if you look for any of the T1 maps, Estuary, Haunted Mansion, or Stagnation in stacks of 30 and above, you'll see that there's not a lot of people selling them and they sell for about 2C each. Estuary is at 1C, Estuary is Haunted Mansion at 2C, Estuary at 2C, Haunted Mansions, and Stagnation uh, at even 5C. There's someone who's buying all the Stagnations up. I'm not sure why. Uh, so as you can see, there is... Uh, some pretty decent sales to go around there. Now, the more people do this, and a lot of people started doing it during my stream, the, the, the price of the maps started going down and down and down, uh, but they were still selling very easily for 1C each, and you're buying the Prophecy for 2C, and it drops something like 10 maps or something. I'm not sure exactly how many. 6 maps, 8 maps, 10 maps. Uh, so there's some pretty good margin because unlike the, the Tabula Prophecy, there's, there's a lot of supply. Uh, there's a ton of people selling this Prophecy. Uh, and if you just put up a live search, they're super, super common. So that's kind of, that was the plan to get started. And I did this for about 50 minutes. And by the end, I had about 140 C worth. Uh, so it wasn't quite an exalt, but it was pretty close to an X worth for doing this for 50 minutes, just buying the prophecy, resetting. Uh, and then basically I was doing as many times as I could using up all of my money. And then when I had no money, I would go back to T1 map farming or T2 maps or whatever I had. Uh, laying around so that I could just keep you know building currency very slowly as I was waiting for these maps to sell because they don't sell instantly All right next after that I had a little bit of currency right 140 C So I was like it's time to start making some pretty good money So I moved on to polish reliquary scarab and I started bulking them so polish reliquary scarab uh, Sell for about 5 C each as you can see here uh, There's a lot of them listed for anywhere between 4 or 5 C the list goes on There's quite a few then it goes up to 6 C and there's a ton of them uh, and if you put a live search, you know, you'll see quite a few of them pop up. So I was buying 5C at a time. I probably bought over 100 of these bad boys uh, or something around there. And then I was selling them for 12 per X or about 10 to 12C each, which means I was buying for 5. I was selling for 10 to 12 or 12 per X, which is about 12C, somewhere around there. Uh, and so I was basically double, doubling my money. Every single time I would trade somebody, I would buy their scarab. I was doubling my money. I was getting two scarabs out of it, essentially. Uh, so I did that for, as you can see here, about 15 minutes of time from 140. A bit, these are the timestamps in the stream, by the way. So for one hour and 40 until two hours and 30 minutes, and I ended up with 600 chaos. So I made, I basically quadrupled my money, more than quadrupled my money even, uh, from the time where I, I, I had the money from the lost maps to where I was done with the Polish Reliquary Scarab. 
Now, the downside about this is that, again, the market dries up, which is why you could be wondering, but why didn't you just keep doing this like forever? Like, this is incredible money, uh, incredible profit. Well, the reality is, again, it, the market dries up. You can't do this forever, but it was a really good way uh, to, to get started. Now, the market has already you know, started to be less dry, so you could easily go back into doing exactly that. Uh, but yeah, 600C at two and a half hours in, and then it was time to move on again. So we did Polish Divination, same exact thing. I was buying for 12, or sorry, 18 to 20C each, and I was selling them for six per X. So if I was selling them for six per X, I was buying for 20C. That means I was paying basically, it's the equivalent of buying exalts for 20C a pop, or, or sorry, for 120C a pop, which means I was making about 25C per six trades, which is about five C per trade. So around the, around the same as this, now, the downside of this is it requires a lot more investments. Uh, you need a lot more capital. These are 5 C's, these are 20 C's. So you need four times more to make the same value per trade. So it's not very good. So that's why I moved away pretty quickly. I only did this for about half an hour. And after that, I had made about an exalt, 750 C. And then I was like, okay, I have enough money. It's time to go for the big bucks. And that's when I bought silver coins. Um, so I bought silver coins uh, for around 3 to 3.5. Sometimes I got lucky and I got them for 4 uh, silver coins per chaos. But the vast majority was bought for about uh, 350 per 100 chaos or 3.5 silver coins per chaos. Because there's a lot of really good prophecies. Uh, there's a lot of good ones and especially one that's very relatively common, I should say, is the twins. And the twins sells for 40c plus each in bulk. All of the Tempest are at least 10c each in bulk. The Alva... Uh, the Master C help for Alvin Jones are about 10C. Uh, there, there's just a lot of really, really good prophecies. Now, the downside is all the prophecy chains, which used to be really, really good, are no longer good. Uh, they're actually really, really bad nowadays. But as you can see, I did this. I started with 750C, uh, which is, how much is that? Let's see, 750 divided by 145. I started with about 5X, and then I started doing prophecies from three hours in uh, until about six and six hours and a half in or so. So about three and a half hours and I was up to 16 X. So I made 11 X. So again, I was making about three ish exalt an hour. And this is not considering any of the lucky possible prophecies uh, whatsoever. I didn't get any good prophecy. I just got the regular stuff and I went through a lot of silver coins. Uh, so I don't think I got either lucky or unlucky. It was just fine. Uh, next, after that, uh, basically this, the price of silver coins looks like it was about to go up or it was going up very, uh, so I decided I'm done with this. Uh, I'm going to let the market reset. And another reason was just, I wanted to do something else. I was kind of bored of doing this for about three hours. Uh, so I went to a note in the wind. So if you look at a note in the wind, it's actually a divination card. Uh, which you can find right here, a note in the wind. And this divination card was selling for 10 C each. Uh, and it's a set of four of them to get you a song of the Sakima. And if you look at the song of the Sakima, it's worth 60 C. So I was basically buying a song of the Sakima for 40 C. And instead of selling it for 60 C, which would be minimal profit, I was doing the As uh, As Mark prophecy. As you can see, these these helmets right here. I have four of them left. I've sold, I think, three already, or something like that. Uh, so, and these sell for anywhere between 90 to 100 C, which means I was again doubling my money. I did this for about 20 minutes, and I made about 2x in 20 minutes. I started uh, with 60, and I ended up with about 18x by the time I was done in terms of value. Uh, and then the last thing I did was Ambitious Obsession. So again, if you look at Ambitious Obsession, which is this divination card here, uh, they were going up for about 25 C each, and they still are, but they do go up in price to about 30 C fairly quickly. Uh, but they were up for 25 C, and there was quite a few of them up, uh, about 20, 20, probably 30 cards at 25 C each or below. And I bought everything I could, or everything I wanted to anyways, and this four set four cards gives you a skittering delirium orb. And the thing is, four cards at 25 C each basically means that you're getting a skittering delirium orb for 100 C. Now, skittering delirium orbs are worth 0 0.9 X or 125 C, which means that you're basically making 25 C per uh, per four trades, right? So about five C per trade. But again, you're investing quite a bit. You're putting in. 25C to get 30C back. It's a lot worse than this, the polished scarab that I was doing, but this isn't it. This doesn't tell the whole story because you have to sell them in bulk. And in bulk, they're worth one exalt each, which is 145C. 
Now, at that point, it means that I was making about 10 to 11 chaos profit every single time I was buying one of these, which is almost 50% uh, additional value every single time uh, for, for, for every bit of currency I was putting in, right? I was putting 100% value, which is uh, 25C, and I was getting basically 150% back. Uh, and these trades go by very, very quickly. Now, it's just a question of, uh, you know, waiting to sell them because, of course, they eat up a lot of value. But as you can see, uh, you can find me selling them. Uh, you should be able to see me selling these as I have six of them. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that's pretty much what I did. And then what I had uh, when I was done with that, the value of my excellence was about 20x. But again, it doesn't tell the whole story because I, I have Just done some faded uniques from the things uh, like uh, that I was doing while I was uh, doing the, uh, the silver coin farming. So I got a really good aesthetic here. Uh, I got a really good uh, Wakatutuki. I got some pretty decent Wind Shriek, right? So I've got some rolls in some cases that are worth a good amount. And of course, this also doesn't include the 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 value for my prophecies that I still have that are in bulk, right? So if I look at, pr uh, for example, Plague of Frogs says that it's worth about three C each. But if you have like twenty of them, uh, it's probably going to be more like you know four C each, right? Uh, so there's one guy at 3C still, but then it goes up to 4C. And this is a, this applies to basically everything that you see in here. Everything is worth more when you have a lot of them. So twice enchanted might be like 2 or 3C, but then again in bulk it's like 4 or 5. Uh, so this applies to also expensive items like the twins. The twins is probably about 30C, but if you sell them in bulk, they're more like 40C. Um, so it's kind of the same situation as like the divination cards and stuff like that. When you have a lot of them, People are basically uh, uh, people are willing to pay a little bit more because they save time and time is currency, right? The the amount of time that they save that they're not just buying a bunch of stuff one at a time is time that they can spend farming where they'll just make more money in the in the end, anyways. So yeah, that's pretty much what I did uh, for the first episode uh, for the first the initial twenty twenty five x somewhere around there. Now tomorrow we're probably gonna be more probably around halfway or a little bit more than halfway. I'm hoping to get around 60x or so tomorrow and then uh, the next day we should be done. So this should be about a three-day project, which is good because there's a lot of really cool upcoming Path of Exile events um, that are going to be starting and therefore the league is probably going to start to really slow down. Uh, but yeah, pretty good progress for the first day. I'm fairly happy with how it went. Of course, it could have went better, but it could have went a lot worse. Um, now, considering we've basically been making about 3 to 3.5 exalt an hour, if you consider uh, even from the very beginning to the end, my entire 7 hours, it's pretty good starting with absolutely nothing, and then it's only going to get better because as I mentioned, as we have more and more currency, we can do bigger and bigger flips, bigger and bigger trades, and of course also start crafting. And when we start crafting is when the money really starts to flow. However, because headhunters are like 90x or whatever, uh, we might actually not do a whole lot of crafting because mediocre items don't no longer really sell at this point in the league. It's mostly just big ticket items, um, and the problem is, big ticket item, uh, big ticket items require influence, require awakeners orb, require maven's orb, stuff like that. So I might actually keep it entirely in the more like flipping and trading side of things. Uh, but we'll see if it really starts to slow down. Uh, then we'll probably start crafting because of course there's a lot of money to be made there. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the first episode. Hopefully you guys enjoy the full and complete breakdown. Again, I highly recommend you don't do exactly what I did. I would recommend you take the uh, the ideas, right? Uh, the, the baselines of what I'm saying and then you apply to different things. If you try to do the exact same scarab flip than I did, chances are it's going to fail. Uh, so this is just a disclaimer that I have to say because I, I get it every single time I do one of these series. People are like, I did the exact same thing and it's not working out. Well... Of course, it's not working out because there's a lot of people who did the exact same thing as well. So you have to apply it to different things instead. Before I go, though, as always, I do want to say a huge, huge thank you to my supporters. So Kat, Stan, Brandon, Tim, Scott, Axel, Thomas, Reese, Rescoro, The Great Master, Mercury, Nake, Max, Alex, Johnny, Wolverine, Hamad, Welcome Back, and Georgie, as well as, of course, Nailed, Alex, Kevin, the other Alex, and Bizen. Anybody else who has supported me in the past and anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to the second episode. I'll catch you then. Peace.